Hey, what's happening? I'm Teacher John Lucas, aka. Today, I'm going to help you get started in teaching young learners. I will share some tips and tricks that I've learned and developed over time that helped me win some of this. Are you ready? Let's go! What are your goals in class? Most will say that they want their students to learn. Some will say they want to make their students laugh, and others want to inspire their students. All are great answers. However, my goal is quite different but simple. My goal is to get my students to speak. It doesn't matter if it's the wrong answer or if it's the wrong grammar. I just want them to speak and interact with me through games, activities, and interesting questions. If the parents see that their kid is interacting with their foreign teacher, boom! You have yourself a regular student. Students and parents will see and feel your efforts. Sometimes that alone can get you booked. As a teacher, it's vital to have a significant presence once you enter the online classroom. It doesn't have to be an overwhelming presence. It should just be enough to make the student feel that you're there and that you mean business. How do we establish that? By greeting them like you mean it. Hello, good morning. I'm teacher John Lucas. There are different kinds of students. That means our approach should vary depending on the type of student that we have. But let me simplify them into two groups, the hyperactive and the present but absent. This time, let me simplify the approach for each student. For the hyperactive, this is the time that you should lessen your energy that you give the student. Or else it will just be like a race with no finish line. I can run! I can run! <laughs> yes! Totoro can run! Teacher can run! <gasps> we! We can run! <laughs> run! <laughs> Okay, okay, uh... Okay, so let's read again. For the present but absent, this is the time where you should give your maximum amount of energy in hopes to get their attention and interest. Because these are students who usually have no plans in participating. Prize goes to... The prize goes Rosie to... Rosie and Tim! Rosie well and Tim. done! Well done! We were the winners! We were the it winners. was a great day! It was a great day! Die! 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 Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just remember to give yourself a fighting chance by giving your best to get the student's attention. If all else fails, just go with the flow. Don't stress yourself. Oh, there's a special mention. Parent students. These are the students that will just repeat everything that you say because they're absolute beginners in English. Okay, Tatara, let's look at the picture. Let's look at the picture. How many friends can you see? How many friends can you see? Can you see? Look at the picture! Look, Look at, the, at picture. the picture! Look at the picture! The approach here is to just say what they need to say and pair it with some hand gestures and actions. For example, instead of asking, Are you ready? Just say, Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Remember, it doesn't matter what type of student you get. What matters is never losing your patience. Speaking of hand gestures or body movements or TPR or total physical response, this is basically using movements that go together with what you're saying. Here are some examples. Hello, my name is Teacher John Lucas. How are you? I'm good, I'm great, I'm wonderful. What is your name? Okay! High five!
Give me a high five thousand! What can you see in the picture? Draw a line! Circle the word! Open! Close! The possibilities are endless! Get creative and get moving! If you could choose one skill to bring with you in an online ESL classroom, what would it be? I'll give you a second to think about that. Oh, time's up! I've been told by some of my students that this specific skill was the main reason why they kept coming back. Good pronunciation. My technique in adding some flavor in my pronunciation is, I pretend to be a game show host, a voice actor for ads, or even an airline pilot or a flight attendant. It's time to play some games! The parrot has a broken wing. I'm going to make some noise. It's activity time! Yes, there's really an activity for you. <laughs> activity number one. There's a snake in my boot! As you can see, there are six different emotions. Happiness, anger, sadness, fear, disgust, and surprised. All you have to do is to read there's a snake in my boot according to the emotion. Let's do this together, shall we? There's a snake in my boot! 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 There's a snake in my boot? What's the significance of this exercise? Reading and speaking with emotion instantly makes you sound better. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you! See the difference? So be emotional. Before we begin the next activity, let me show you a photo of my computer screen. Ew! What's that on the screen? I know what you're thinking. Germs! But it's actually my spit. Due to the techniques that I have just revealed, my computer screen has received a glorious amount of my spit. Which brings us to the next exercise. I want you to put your hand in front of your mouth as we read this. Alright? Enunciate! Let's roll! Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where is the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Well, ain't that swell. Put her there, partner! Ew. Combine these two techniques and it will surely boost both your pronunciation game and energy. And remember, the more spit your computer screen has, the more money you will have. So spit them good! I like to treat this online job as a business. And in business, you invest. Invest in something that will be beneficial in increasing the quality of your classes. One of the best investments for your online classes will be your teaching aids or props. For starters, you can use props that's as good as garbage or anything lying around the house like... Look, there's a cloud! <sighs> it's snowing! Merry Christmas! Yeah! So soft. Oh no, we have a problem. We need to fix this. <laughs> All right! Oh, look at me! I'm flying a kite! <laughs> Open and close. Stir! Dog! <laughs> and if you're ready to do some real investing, you can start by purchasing teaching aids or toys that can represent a lot of things. For example, Ride! Spin the wheel! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Go! Stop! Helmet! You're going too fast! <laughs> Safe! Today we're going to talk about phonics. 
Oh, hello there, man on a bicycle. What did you bring for us today? Oh, we're going to talk about the sound of the letter A and the sound of the letter R. The more weapons you have, the easier it is to win the battle. So start investing today. Now let me share my workstation setup to you so you can get an idea or two on how to maximize your productivity. For my desktop, I use an iMac 5K. I also do some multimedia work on the side, so this is necessary for me. It's a bit of an overkill if you will just use it for online classes. But if you have it, you will barely have any technical issues. Communication is key when having online classes. So having a virtual eye contact with your student is an integral part of a lesson. Avoid looking like this on camera. So, align the video of your student to your webcam, or vice versa. Now you can stare right into their soul. For my light, I use a studio lighting softbox with a light stand. The good thing about this is that the light won't be too harsh on you. Whatever light you have, just make sure it's not too bright and not too dark. For my headset, I use the Logitech H151. It's cheap and it gets the job done. It's good if you live in an area where the outside noise is minimal. But if your neighborhood is as noisy as this, you should invest in a noise-canceling headset. Always consider the comfort and experience of your student. I had my work table customized to a height of 45 inches because I like to stand while I teach. I paired it with a tall chair so I can sit down when I get tired and it won't give any problems in camera orientation. Teaching while sitting down for long hours is not good for our overall health. Standing more while you teach gives you more energy, boosts your mood and focus, and keeps the circulation going. I also use an anti-fatigue mat from FlexiSpot to make standing feel more comfortable. And how can you do moves such as the elevator and the escalator if you're sitting down? How do I come up with crazy fun lessons? Well, there are four words that I keep in mind. Demonstrate, expand, emphasize, exaggerate. So the next time you're preparing for a lesson, ask yourself, what can I demonstrate? What can I expand? What can I emphasize? What can I exaggerate? This is my friend Totoro. He likes to eat everything. What? This is my friend Pink Panther. He is rich and famous. I am rich and famous. Wait a minute, let me buy a shirt. Ta-da! This is my friend Mr. Ellie. He talks really fast. What are you talking about? I don't talk fast. I don't believe you. Do you believe him? Oh my goodness. One, two, oh, and three. I have three friends. A school prize giving? That means they're giving away prizes. Congratulations, 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 and congratulations. I'm going to make the smallest chair in the world. <sighs> world record. Look, I have the smallest chair in the world. That's a lot of pizzas. I know, right? I'm stuffed. Want some more? Excuse me. Hello? Oh, hi, Mom. Okay, right away. Totoro, we have to hurry. Mom's at the airport. Let's go. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Oh, oh I forgot. Here I come! By doing this, you're encouraging your students to speak and interact with you. My main goal, some of them will have their own demonstrations or have their own show and tell, so look at every corner of the page that you're teaching and put those crazy fun essentials to use. So, you have reached the end of your class. Don't forget to give your student a pat on the back and a treat or reward before you say your goodbyes. And...
and we are finished! You did a splendid job! Your answers were correct, your pronunciation was good, you were awesome. That's why teacher John Lucas will say, Congratulations! Woo! Give me a high five. Thousand! Ah! <laughs> okay! So that's all for today. Teacher has to go. Alright, so thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye! You can come up with your own creative idea on what rewards to give, especially on the very first lesson. But don't focus on this too much, because the excitement of the student in receiving rewards will eventually fade as time goes by. Bear in mind that our students deserve the praise because it's not an easy task to learn a foreign language. My dear teachers, remember there will be good days and bad days. Don't let that stop you from giving your best in class. In the end, the good days will always outweigh the bad ones, and your effort is always worth it. That's all for now. If you have questions or if you want to learn more, visit my social media pages on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. I wish you all a crazy fun teaching journey. See you around. Bring it back.